Olá pessoal, boa tarde aqui no Brasil, good afternoon in South Africa or good evening. Um, today I have a very special live with me South Africa, Natasha, and I'm really excited because she looks gorgeous and all Brazilian people are huge fans of her, so it will be very nice knowing more about her because we are going to be friends at Miss Universe and then it's nice to arrive there already knowing her. Let's say hello to Pernambuco in Brazil. Hello to Amapá. Bem-vindos. Un super beso para Colombia. Tenemos colombianos con nosotros. Un beijo también para São Paulo, interior de São Paulo. Boa tarde para vocês do Ceará que estão sempre conmigo. Rio de Janeiro, Porto Alegre, minha terrinha, Fortaleza. Muito bom ter todos vocês aqui. Natal, Santa Catarina, Maranhão. Gente, que delícia. Bem-vindos. Pessoal de Belo Horizonte também. Um beijo para Minas. Que legal ter vocês aqui nessa live, num horário diferente, né? Mas a gente está contando com o um fuso horário lá da África do Sul. Então, para ela lá já vai ser em torno de umas sete da noite, eu acredito. Então, assim a gente consegue ter esta live. Feliz de ter vocês aqui com nós, conosco. Um beijo para Pernambuco, Bahia, Minas Gerais, Mato Grosso, Campinas. Que lindo, gente. Que lindo. Bem-vindos todos. Estou super empolgada com a live, porque África do Sul é África do Sul. Tem uma... É, eles dizem um peso de faixa, né? Que é aquela miss que a gente espera sempre ver no Miss Universo. E vai ser uma delícia conhecer um pouquinho mais da Miss África do Sul desse ano, que é a Natasha. A Natasha que vai representar a África do Sul no Miss Universo. Seremos companheiras lá, então para mim vai ser muito interessante, muito especial poder já conhecer um pouquinho mais dela e chegar no Miss Universo mais entrosada com ela. Tô esperando ela entrar, já mandei o link para ela. Let's see. From where in the world are you? Let me know, please. Welcome people from Rondônia, welcome Piauí, Piauí, lindos, um beso para a Argentina, nossos hermanos aqui no live, bienvenidos, um beijo para Tocantins e um beijo para o grupo Torcida de Universe, gente, vocês fazem o meu coração feliz, muito, muito obrigada por todo o apoio de vocês, vocês são simplesmente incríveis comigo e me enche de, de energia para cada dia dar mais de mim, me dedicar mais a esse título, vocês são muito especiais, então um beijo especial para o grupo Torcida de Universe, vamos trazer essa coroa para o Brasil. A calor aqui em São Paulo... Estou aqui esperando. Natália já, Natália, Natasha já está a postos. Vou convidar ela daqui a pouquinho. Feliz que vocês estão aqui conosco. Welcome, people from Thailand. Welcome. Happy for having you here. Nice. Nice. Yes. Well, today I have a very special guest. I will talk, I'm going to talk with Miss South Africa 2020, Natasha, and I'm really excited. Brazilian people are huge fans of her, as I said, and everyone wants to know more about Natasha. So let me invite her to join us this afternoon. One moment, let's see. She here. Hello, how are you doing, people? Hello, hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Nice to meet you, nice to have thank you here. You. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Brazilian people are huge fans of you, so people are really excited. 
and <laughs> me too. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what time is in South Africa now? It's 7 p.m. So it's actually evening. Good evening and good afternoon to everyone. Nice. Uh, if you don't mind, I will translate our conversation to people in Brazil, okay. then they can understand better, okay? Perfect. So, ela disse, boa tarde para todos aqui. Agora são sete da noite lá na África do Sul. Oh, it's so nice having you here. Let me know how is how has been so far been Miss South Africa during this pandemic year? How is it? Because do you had the competition this year, right? Different from other countries. You compete this year, right? It was last year, but it was during the pandemic, and we obviously tried to make the ah, best yeah, of the situation. Last year, yeah. sorry. Yes, <laughs> no, it's true. It actually feels like 2020 to me as well. <laughs> and um, we really tried to make it work, you know, taking everything in consideration from social distancing, wearing masks, but yet still putting up a brilliant production for everyone to watch and, you know, crowning a new queen. Um, but yeah, I actually want to know, how's it been for you? Because obviously you've been appointed last year. And um, so you kind of wasn't busy with anything and then all of a sudden, sudden you are Miss Brazil. How was that? That was a huge surprise and a huge honor for me because, in nice. fact, it was not in my planning. Like, I was not planning being Miss Brazil last year. I was in China working and it was a very prosperous moment in, for me in China as well. Mm -hmm. And then with the pandemic, I received this invitation, which was like a huge surprise and a huge honor to me because always representing brazil it's it's something very special and i do it with my whole heart so i accept it with no guessing and and now yes it was like a huge change in my life i came back from china now i'm here again in brazil that's so good to me because i was missing my family my friends and life here so being able to serve my country in this difficult moment it's it's for sure a huge honor Yes. No, it's true, and I can relate so much to you because, like you said, it wasn't in your planning. But yet it was your dream to walk on that Miss Universe stage and represent your country. And it was the same for me, you know, being second runner-up. I got this huge opportunity and making history as standing there as second runner-up, but yet still wearing South Africa across my chest. And, um, you know, the honor that comes with it, I don't think we can explain it to anyone. It's really nice. And I saw you worked in China. I actually saw you saw you being an actress there. Um, how did you find it, actually? Was it was it something you would like to go on after this? or? Well, I'm really open to the opportunities that life brings to me. And I, I have this uh, sensitivity of where my heart is, is pointing to. And then... I received an invitation to go for one month to China just to do a advertisement for an important brand there. And in this month, I fell in love with China. And then I just decided I must be here. I, I have something to do here. I don't know what is it, but I, I must live in China now. And then I decided to figure out what could I do in China. And China is, uh, well, it's China. China is powerful and it's a world of possibilities. And when I realized China had invested so much in Hollywood and all the movie productions, I realized that, yes, I want to be an actress in China, something that no one has done before. And I want to be the first Brazilian actress to conquer China. It was very challenging, for sure. Probably the most challenging country I could choose. But I love these kind of things, like challenging myself, pushing myself forward. I think it's always a good opportunity to self-growth. So China was a blessing in my life for sure. And I spent there almost four years, three years and a half. So it's, it's a bright moment in my story for sure. I must say, like not knowing the language and going to this country with, you know, this expectation of being a successful actress. Um, I can just imagine and I have such admiration for you. <laughs> I do not understand Mandarin. So, yeah, hats off to you for getting that right. But, yeah, I mean, so coming back to the role, it was filled with so much, so much purpose. And, um, yeah, you couldn't have came back for a better reason than this. 
Amazing, right? Thank you so much. Let's just me translate a little bit to people. Yeah, é, sure. Eu perguntei como foi né, ser eleita Miss África do Sul no ano de pandemia. Eles tiveram realmente concurso lá. Ela ficou em terceiro lugar, então para ela também foi uma surpresa ser a indicada ao Miss Universo, porque na África do Sul eles avaliam as ganhadoras, as, o top 3, e de, decidem para que concurso elas devem ir, qual tem o maior perfil para cada concurso. Então foi uma surpresa para ela ser escolhida para o Miss Universo. Está muito feliz também em poder servir o, o país dela nesse ano pandêmico. E aí ela perguntou da minha experiência, né, como foi também ser eleita, vocês já sabem, né, muito disso, da surpresa que foi para mim, da mudança que foi na minha vida, de retornar ao Brasil. E logo ela perguntou como foi que eu fui parar na China e trabalhando lá, e eu contei para ela a história também de como foi que eu decidi ser uma atriz na China e como esse desafio mudou minha vida. And Natasha, so far, what was the biggest challenge of being Miss South Africa for you? So, um, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I tested positive for COVID. So when I found out that, yes, yes. So last year, during festive season, yes, in Africa, I tested positive. And I would say that was definitely something that was also unplanned. And, you know, starting to pray for Miss Universe immediately after finding out this was a span in the works. But, um, you know, it also reminds us just to take things slowly and to, to really reflect and see you need rest. Um, so that was definitely <laughs> one thing that's been that's been the hardest, not gonna lie. Wow, I can imagine, I can imagine. Eu perguntei qual foi o maior desafio dela até agora com Miss South Africa, África do Sul, e ela disse que ela testou positivo para o Covid, que foi então um momento de muita tensão, foi um momento muito delicado né, no ano dela como Miss, sem dúvida o mais delicado, o mais desafiador, mas ela está bem agora, graças a Deus. And how is the pandemic situation now in your country? It's actually gotten a lot worse, unfortunately. So we have a second wave, especially because now it's summer. It's December in South Africa, so it's full on summer. And obviously with the virus, it can actually su survive much better in this temperature. So we are getting a lot new cases and unfortunate deaths. Um, so we are fighting through it. We are currently at level three. Um, and I think it hits home when you know someone personally passing away from COVID-19. Uh, so I actually know someone who passed away recently of that. And it becomes so much more serious to you. And you actually just need to reevaluate and say, you know what, social distancing is important and wearing masks is important. Um, especially with our country that's, that's um, going through it quite, quite badly, unfortunately. How's it been in Brazil? Yeah, we are almost in the same boat. Uh, actually, we also have a second wave now because of the uh, the New Year parties and Christmas, everything was intensified. Unfortunately, we also had a lot of deaths happening and it's so sad. And as you said, it's of course, we shouldn't need to have someone close to us to, to get more aware about the situation. Mm -hmm. But in fact, when we have, we get even more touched about the situation. I just hope the whole Brazilian community can be in very responsible and knowing the, 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 the importance of uh, self-distance and these, these all whole protocols that the pandemic asked to us. Uh, we are happy because this week we start the vaccines. Uh, oh, and, yeah. Yeah, it will take time. We are a huge country, so it will take a long time to everyone have access to the vaccine, but it's already on start and brings hope. So we are happy, even though the situation is still very critical. Yes. I think it's to start with obviously health, um, health workers, frontline workers, doctors, and et cetera. To start with the vaccine maybe there and, and then branch it out. South Africa is also in the work of looking at the vaccine. So unfortunately, we don't know as yet when it's arriving here. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can fight this virus. It, it, it has to end. Everything has a beginning and maybe everything to me has an end. Absolutely. So. And like human being, like human race, we, we are bigger than this. I'm sure that we are going to overcome this situation and I hope we can learn a lot from it. And also uh, this year, I think we learn how powerful and strong we can be if we work together. Yeah.
like we had developed the fastest vaccine in the story of the humanity. So yeah. this is a huge example of how we can achieve if we work together hand by hand. So this is a good lesson to all of us, right? I agree, I agree. Yes, let me translate. Eu perguntei para ela como está a situação da pandemia lá na África do Sul. Ela disse que também estão passando por uma segunda onda. Infelizmente, muitos óbitos. É um momento muito delicado. Ainda não começaram a vacinação. Contei para ela que a gente, felizmente, começou a vacinação, que a gente está muito feliz. E lembrei né, todos do quão importante é o distanciamento social e o quanto eu espero que todos estejam conscientes disso. E que a gente acredita que, sim, sairemos melhores da pandemia, aprenderemos muito com essa experiência e que o ser humano provou que ele é capaz de atingir muita coisa se a gente está trabalhando juntos, assim como a vacina feita em tempo recorde, que é a da Covid-19. And let me ask you something. You are Miss South Africa, and our current <laughs> Miss Universe is South Africa. Yes. Do you feel it brings some... Uh, over extra pressure on you or how do you deal with this how how is it so obviously i've got some big shoes to fill so we don't make it any easier um i must say i think regardless every single country feels that type of pressure because you want to go there and you want to represent your country as best as you can and make sure that everyone feels um, included and represented through you. So I think regardless of who is the current Miss Universe, you would feel that pressure because you want to go out there and obviously put your best foot forward. But yeah, Zulzi is amazing. I'm truly so, so honored to go after her. Amazing. Perguntei se ela sente uma pressão extra por ela ser África do Sul e a Zulzi ser da África do Sul. Ela disse que sim, mas ela acha que todos os países passam por isso, porque cada um de nós quer representar o seu país da melhor maneira possível. Então, claro que ela sente, mas ela acha que ela não é a única passando por isso e que ela vai dar o máximo para representar o país dela e o povo dela da melhor maneira. People are asking here in the comments about how high are you? Uh -huh. How tall are you? Sorry. How tall are you? What's your height? <laughs> I'm with 167, so I'm the same height as Zemi and Zulzi. Um, and it's so amazing, actually, this year. It's so amazing to actually see this year there are shorter contestants. Um, so many people for so long didn't feel represented, um, you know, in that aspect. And this year, we're showing them no matter how high you can stand on that stage. Absolutely. Well, vocês perguntaram qual a altura dela. Ela disse que ela tem a mesma altura que a Demi e a Zozi tem 1,67, que ela tem muito orgulho disso porque ela acha que por muito tempo mulheres que não eram tão altas não se sentiam representadas e que ela representa toda essa diversidade de mulheres que é abaixo de 1,70 e que continuam sendo lindas e empoderadas e maravilhosas para representar o país. Yes, this is a very interesting point, and I love to see how the beauty patterns are being flexibilized and like we are really embracing all kinds of beauty and all kinds of women, like the diversity that we have in the world. For me, this is so important, and I'm, I'm yeah. very proud to be part of this time in the story where each one of us brings a like style of beauty and represent the beauty of its country. It's, it's really amazing, amazing. Yeah, and if you just think about it, like 10 years back, nothing was the same as it is now. Mm -hmm. And that if you look at the past five winners, it is so much diversity. And that's what I love about it is, we are quite lucky to actually be standing on that stage, specifically now in this era. Yes, I, I feel the same. For me, it's a huge privilege. Yeah, we are live on my Instagram. We can say hi, yeah? Yes, sure. Hello, everyone from South Africa. Yeah, this is Julia, guys. We are doing a live, and um, this is Miss Brazil. And if you have any questions, please ask them. Yeah. Good. And then I also asked to Brazilian people send me some questions for you, and they were very nice. Right. They sent tons of questions. So I will make, <laughs> if you don't mind, I will make some of them. Feels. Yes. I will please. ask like normal things but if you don't feel comfortable just let me know but it's something very simple and curiosities from the brazilian fans you can ask let me find here in my instagram 
And how has been your preparation to Miss Universe? Do you Busy. have a, work, a working team? How, how is it during the pandemic? Yes, so obviously our organization does everything. Um, I'm, I'm so fortunate to have them. And it's a full-time job. I'm not going to lie. Going to Miss Universe, you obviously have your different aspects. You've got your walking, you've got your gown, you've got um, many segments. But I think what's most important to me is pitching up there with a more holistic perspective, you know, being mentally um, fit and being emotionally strong. And during Miss South Africa, there was a few things that I actually took away from it and learned a lot from it. And preparing for Miss Universe is not only practicing your walk or your makeup. Many people think it is. But there is so much more going on, you know, um, internally. And uh, through that, that's the way that you can add that moral fiber to society. And that's what it, what's important to me. You know what you bring to the table and you know why you bring it. How's it been for you? Is it also a full-time job for you? Because I'm not going to lie, it takes time. <laughs> no, no, it's a full-time. No one... <laughs> just we can understand that like in the end of the day you are still miss south africa i am still miss brazil that yeah. it doesn't over like every day it's 24 hours job yeah. seven days per week and and i think uh we have a very strong self pressure and self uh I don't know. We just want to do the best. So even mm -hmm. when they ask me to relax, I, I feel I can't. I just <laughs> keep pushing myself and standing yeah. and trying. Yeah, yeah because it, it's like one chance in life. It's one time yeah. we will live this. So I don't want to miss any moment, any minute of that. So and I, I, I love the preparation time. Actually, the social projects and all the classes I have. I think it's so amazing it's a so beautiful opportunity of self-growth that for me mm -hmm. miss universe it, it's now it's happening it's not yes. something that will happen on may maybe no it's something that i'm already living and it, it's it's just beautiful experience yes it's true like uh, thinking back in this past six months and how far you grow and how rapidly you grow it's actually quite scary because when i look back i'm like I started at the, as, as this 22-year-old girl, I started blonde, and now I'm brunette, I'm older, I feel <laughs> it was like a few years, you know? I absolutely know, and then people, and more, more than this, like, we have these fast changings, and so much learning, and we have the eyes, like, the, the, the world's eyes on us, so Ooh. everyone is, like, being part of it you are not leaving this alone so no one will will let you forget anything so it's it's, it's really right? incredible yeah they don't the, remember I'm like, people will remind you <laughs> absolutely <Whoa>. when you, <laughs> yeah every day they do some evolution pictures uh, before and after and i was like oh my god i cannot oh. they they see too much evolution and that's nice right the the way that and just, they support us and it's beautiful and also how important your journey is to others because now you know entering the south africa it was representing natasha and i wanted to represent south africans that was the goal and now having the title miss universe south africa it's not representing myself um, there's a certain reason why at miss universe they say south africa and not natasha and Absolutely. you know they can be great responsibility with that so yeah, it's great to see people following your journey and just supporting you, uplifting you. And, you know, you will get those negative days where you feel people um, comment something unnecessary and something very personal that hurts. And yeah, you ask yourself, is this making me stronger? Is this breaking me down? And you need to remind yourself why you started, why you are here. Absolutely. And how do you deal with, uh, in addition of reminding yourself, why are you doing this? How do you protect yourself for criticism? How do you deal with this? So obviously I get it a lot. As our current Miss Universe is from South Africa, you get a lot of um, opinions from people. But to me, I must say I have a 
in and I am confident in who I am and my abilities. And you just need to remind yourself of that. So coping, I think I'm doing well. Also knowing that social media does not determine anything. And that you need to know you've got to pitch up there as the best version of yourself. And destiny, um, it's there. If it's for you, it's going to be for you. And you just need to remind yourself, um, people are going to have opinions. I mean, we ourselves have opinions. We just need to you know, take a step back and say, don't be too active maybe on social media when it's for you. And maybe just take some time to reflect and say, you know what, this is not doing me well. Um, and get back on it and know why you are there. Absolutely. Natasha, I translate to people that you had COVID last year and then they are really like worried now if to know if you are well now, if you are recovered, it's everything okay now? About yes. Your yes, thank you for asking guys and caring. So my mother tested positive the week that I went to test and I had to test due to obviously being busy with Miss Universe preparation, I had to first find out if I'm negative. And you know what the scary part is, is I didn't have many symptoms, yet I went to test and I was positive. Um, so for me, it was obviously difficulty breathing, losing my taste, my smell, um, fatigueness, yeah. sleeping a lot. So it does affect the lungs, but I must say I was really fortunate to um, have it fast, not have it too severely. I'm really, really blessed and grateful for that. Because, you know, there's so many people that their health is in perfect condition and they end up in hospital. They don't have any underlying issue. So I just want to also tell everyone, don't ignore any symptom, even if it's just a headache. Just go and test. Be safe. Yeah. Perfect. Gente, vocês perguntaram se ela tá bem do Covid, né? Eu disse que ela teve. Ela tá bem, tá recuperada. Ela disse que foi uma situação difícil. Ela teve, sim, sintomas, mas que, graças a Deus, não foi nada muito grave. Então, ela se recuperou bem. Hoje, ela não tem nenhuma sequela. Enfim, ela se sente bem. Então, só para vocês ficarem tranquilos. Vocês estão perguntando aqui nos comentários, tá? Natasha está bem e 100% para o Miss Universo. Amazing. I nod my head as if I understand. <laughs> I'm like, I nod my head, yes, as if I understand your language. But I just, I just see your face smile and I'm like, yes. Oh. Linda, yes. Um, they ask, who is your uh, inspiration in life? Like, who is the person you get inspired to? I would say my grandfather, um, he's 81 years old this year, and I take so many life lessons from him. He lives life as if he's literally like 30 years old. He's just so energetic and always positive. He would never tell you if he is feeling sick or not feeling well. And I think um, everything like going through life, he was obviously a second father to me. Um, I lost my father when I was only 16 years old, and he was really um, that fundamental role in my life in supporting me. And um, when I was 18 years old, learning how to drive, taking me to my license. And I feel like everyone has that person in their life that they feel um, they take a lot of advice from. And so that's my grandfather. I'm not going to lie. He, he In my eyes, he's not 81 years old. Beautiful. I would ask the same question. I believe it's my mom. She's a so strong woman and she raised me and my brother with so much values and love. And even when she was struggling, she never let us feel that. She always mm -hmm. protect us and push us forward to, to chase our dreams. And this is so genuine and generous from her. So I admire her a lot. She's a strong woman and inspires me a lot. So my mom for sure. Eu perguntei para ela quem era a pessoa que inspirava ela. Ela disse que é o o vô dela, porque ela perdeu o pai muito nova. Então foi o vô dela que criou ela. Ele tem 80 e poucos anos e ela diz que ele parece um, um jovem assim, porque ele não parece ter essa idade. Tá sempre rindo, sempre de bom humor. Ela aprende muito com ele. E ele que criou ela. Basicamente, então essa é a pessoa que inspira ela, que ela recebe os conselhos. E ela perguntou mesmo para mim, eu disse que é a minha mãe, que é essa mulher forte que criou a mim e meu irmão com tanto amor, com tanto valor. 
e que sempre me inspirou muito e me impulsionou a seguir os meus sonhos. Ah, people want to know which is the traditional food in South Africa. I also want to know. Ooh, we've got a lot and it's really, really nice. And I'm a foodie, so let me tell I can I can explain in detail. <laughs> so we normally do barbecues and it's called braai, where we have some meat. Um, maybe uh, we call it a braai broiki, that's in my language. So it's a sandwich that you make with tomato and cheese and onion and you put it on the on the grill and you actually let it go. So it's it's really it's like a toast, but more on like um on a fire, making it on a fire. And then there's pup and sauce. I love that as well. Uh, we've got we've got a lot. Um, Cook sister, for instance, it's like a sweet dessert. Um, what else? M milk tart. Do you guys know milk tart? Not. Okay, so then I think it is exclusive to South Africa, but I would say it's, it's having a nice barbecue, watching rugby. Biltong, it's like jerky. They call it jerky in America. Okay. Um, yeah, jerky. It's, it's, we call it biltong. It's such a weird word, I presume. Amazing. Eu perguntei qual é a comida tradicional. Huh? And your well, food? I would actually ask no, I don't know at all. Well, Brazil, we have like a very famous barbecue style. It's different from American barbecue. We do it on with the wood, like burning wood. And it's so delicious. We eat a lot of meat here, actually. I love barbecue. And I would say barbecue and beans and rice. But our beans, we do like a soup with the beans. It's okay. not a soup, but we eat it like beans with the rice and some meat or so it's it's just delicious so i think the most uh traditional foods and we have one sweet that calls it's called brigadeiro it's made with uh condensed milk so delicious it's very sweet people people in, ge in general that people are not from brazil they think oh my god it's too sweet but brazilian people we just love it i really love, love it, it. É, ela disse que a comida tradicional lá também é churrasco, mas o churrasco no estilo deles. Turkey também, que é... Ai, como é que diz turkey em, em português? Gente? <risos> I, I, sometimes I forget the words in português, so now I don't know how to translate okay. turkey in português. Later I will tell What? them, because... It's like a dried meat. They always like dry it down and you can have it as a snack. Yeah, no, I know what it is. I know what is it, but I just forgot the word in Portuguese. Not the word. Just happens sometimes. Okay. And let's see. What do you think, people ask, it's your uniqueness and will differentiate you from the other contestants this year? I would definitely have to say resilience. Um, throughout my whole life, I have chose not to be a product of my circumstances, but to be a product of my decisions. And obviously, at a young age, I lost someone so important in my life. And uh, financially, we struggled a lot after my father passed away because he was employed for three years and um, after that, obviously, passed away. And at that age, I actually used to do pageants. and. I really had to um, sustain myself. I had to find a way to get income, help my mother, um, pay my own studies or win a bursary or buy my own car. And I think when I say resilience, it's really pushing through no matter what your circumstances are. Um, and alongside that, I would say hard working. And I don't say it with a light heart. I say it in terms of knowing what it's like to work hard for something. Because nothing even in my life fell on my lap and I just got it. I really had to work for it and, and put my mind to it and go for it. That's beautiful. And now I just translate to them, but when you talk, I remember that I read that you, because you want to compete in the, the beauty pageants, you start with your mom doing your own dresses, is it? Okay, just hold yeah. on, I will translate to them before. Uh, eu perguntei para ela qual era a característica dela que diferenciava ela das outras candidatas esse ano. E ela disse que a resiliência, 
que ela sempre teve que trabalhar muito duro para conquistar tudo que ela queria, principalmente porque ela perdeu o pai muito cedo, então a família inteira teve que se mobilizar nesse sentido, então ela se considera muito resiliente e ela sabe o valor do que é trabalhar duro para conquistar o que ela quer. E aí agora eu lembrei que eu tinha lido que justamente por essas dificuldades que ela teve com a família dela e ela queria continuar participando de concursos de beleza, ela junto com a mãe dela começaram a fazer os vestidos para ela competir. Agora ela vai me contar essa história. Ok, tell me, how was it? Like, do you, did you know at the time how to make the dress? How it happened? <laughs> so it's actually a long story. I'm going to try and keep it short. Okay. So I obviously did pageants growing up and I absolutely loved it. I loved being on stage and there was a time, I think it was when I was around 14 years old, my mother said, it's too expensive to buy the dresses. She's going to try and make it herself and she had sewing in school. So she started, now that I'm looking back, I'm actually laughing because I had like, the dresses wasn't the prettiest, but okay, my mom really did with so much love and she would make my dresses for me. And later on, I think it was around when I was 17 years old, I took designing as a subject in school. And I got this love for fashion and I never knew what I wanted to study, but I knew I loved, you know, dressing up and, and looking at fashion trends. And I think when I was first year, um, people started contacting my mom and myself and asking like, do we make dresses for other people than myself? And we started this small business and I registered, I think I registered it six months out of school. And to this day, I'm doing it full time. I actually started full time this year. So we specialize in wedding gowns, matric farewell dresses. And I might be making something for Miss Universe of my own life. That's amazing, that's so awesome. Gente, é uma beautiful story, very inspiring. Thank you. Uh, Thank ela you. então, a mãe dela não tinha como comprar vestidos para ela competir, então a mãe dela começou a fazer os próprios vestidos. E ela vestia com muito orgulho porque tinha sido feito com muito amor pela mãe dela. Depois que ela saiu da, do colégio, ela seis meses depois tinha começado a sua própria linha de roupas, ela tem uma marca hoje especializada em vestidos de gala e é muito provável que ela faça algo bem especial para o Miss Universo ela mesma. That's so nice, really. And what which is your favorite color when you think about dresses? Well, not specifically in dresses, I think. Um... But in general, my favorite color is dark teal. I think people have heard this on my Instagram so many times. I love dark teal. And emerald, the color I wore at Miss South Africa. Um, I think obviously because I have green eyes, I, I try to maybe match or, or something of like course. that. And you look gorgeous. You were gorgeous Thank at the South Africa oh. competition. I was Thank like, you. Thank you. Incredible, really. <laughs> Thank you so much. But yeah, for a, for a gown, I don't have a specific color. Like, there's not a not a color that I would specifically go for and not go for. Mm -hmm. And I think people be more like um, out of the box when it comes to color. You don't have to do a typical pattern color. Absolutely, I uh, of course our dresses for Miss Universe is like a secret. But yes. <laughs> we the most important is we feel so confident with them. It's like. Yeah. The dress needs a miss, not a miss needs a dress, right? Exactly. So the dress exactly. just needs fit us and make us shining even brighter. Right. So yeah, I'm really What's excited. What's your favorite color in uh, general? Your favorite color, not in dress. General. I, I love white. I love white. white yeah, white. Is is it's so it's so clean. I think it's approachable. When you we are you are wearing white, it's people feel it like closer yeah. i love it yeah i think it's beautiful it's simple and at the same time like so elegant i love it. Yeah. ah people were asking if have do you have contact with zozi like you both talk sometimes how is it so we don't speak a lot obviously there's a huge um time difference from the usa to south africa so that's obviously um, makes it a bit difficult, but we do chat now and then, but nothing too long. Or um, I think she has a busy schedule. I see she's all around New York, <laughs> living her best life. Um, but yeah, okay, no, no, not a lot, not a lot of contact. But hopefully we'll chat soon. Good, good. 
let's see what else and uh, people said you just look gorgeous in the camera they are like Thank hypnotized you. by you like they just love you so much they are really Thank excited you so here. Thank you so so much. It's so nice. Eu disse para ela o quanto vocês estão achando linda ela na, na live e o quanto ela é hipnotizante. Eu perguntei se ela tem contato com a Zozi, vocês perguntaram aqui, e ela disse que tem um contato leve, mas não é como se elas falassem muito, até porque a agenda da Zozi é muito corrida e o fuso horário também não ajuda. Então, se falam às vezes, mas nada específico, nada muito. Nice. And do you have any hobby? Like, what do you like to do? I know, for me, for example, as Miss Brazil, sometimes, like, I love so much my life as Miss Brazil that my hobby is leaving all the schedules that I have, all the appointments. This for me is enough. Like I don't take a time like, no, today is my free day. Yeah, like But yes. normal people, normal people, let's say, they usually, they have their hobbies and they give you time. So do you have any hobbies that something that you would like to do when you have time, maybe after the, the crowning year? I'm a lot like you. I really love my schedule. Like, I'm not going to lie. When I see in my diary, I've got a hair appointment. I thrive. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I can do this. Or a gym session. But for me, I'm a very active person. So um, I love hiking. I love nature. So typically on a weekend, I would do a hiking trial. Um, I love traveling. I couldn't have done it a lot. And especially, obviously, not now. But I just... I started traveling in 2018 and I still have a few countries on my on my checklist and then what else obviously to me designing doesn't feel like a job it really does feel like a hobby I absolutely love it um what else I played hockey for so many years and I actually stopped because I was afraid of breaking my nose or something uh -huh, um, I yeah, like, like I think the first year I was like oh, listen I need to make a, a very careful choice here And then something else I love, I don't think many people know this, but I have been singing since I was 10 years old and not doing it professionally or anything, but I enjoy singing with my brother. He was actually on The Voice, so he's quite amazing. And then everyone expects me to be, and I'm like, listen, we all got our own talents here. Uh, That's so nice. I can enjoy singing, but not in front of people, just like you know, in the car or at my studio. I enjoy that a lot. That's so nice. And listen to you, I feel we are very similar to each other because I also yes. love nature and being in contact with nature and hiking and doing these activities outside. And as well, when I was young, I used to do artistic skating and oh, wow. doing competition and these kind of things. And I stopped it because I was afraid to break an arm, a leg or something. And yeah. it was like, okay, let's stop now. But I also am very active. So it, it's very nice to know that queens have a life in yes, addition of, of the queen's life, right? People must yes. know that. That's nice. Uh, eu perguntei para ela qual é o hobby dela. Eu disse para ela que eu, às vezes, amo tanto a minha agenda como Miss ou como o meu trabalho que eu nem lembro de ter um hobby, porque isso para mim é maravilhoso. Ela disse que ela é bem igual, mas que num ano em que ela possa tirar um tempo livre, que não é o nosso ano agora, ela adora fazer atividades na natureza. Ela também, há muitos anos, que canta junto com o irmão dela. Nada profissional, mas ela adora. Ela também jogava hockey, que é aquele jogo americano mais americano, enfim, que a gente não tem aqui no Brasil, mas ela parou porque ela tinha medo de se machucar, e eu contei para ela que eu sou bem parecida com ela, também adoro a natureza, também parei de, de, de patinar porque eu tinha medo de me machucar agora, né, pro concurso, então a gente é bem parecida, tô amando isso, amando essa interação. Amazing! People in my life say that they love you, they love Brazilian people. Lindo! Big hug to all South Africans. Beautiful people. Let's see what else Brazilian people want to know about you. Right. Okay, from South Africa country, what do you want to show to the world? I think that we are so good in representing diversity in every single aspect so race uh, we have 11 11 official languages plus sign language 12 
And um, I would really say that there's a lot of culture and tradition and that we are people that is um, very resilient. We don't have the best circumstances always in South Africa and just to see how the people try and make the best with what they have. So I really feel that we are hardworking people for what we want. And besides that, the weather in South Africa is obviously amazing. And very fun fact, it's a really small fun fact. Our South African flag has the most colors in our flag, like in the whole world. How cool is that? So I feel like that was like a, a very That's cool. really cool. I love that. It's <laughs> very, very nice. like, warm and loving and very accommodating and um, friendly people. Like you won't get a South African that will give you like a hug, obviously not during COVID, but like give you a big <laughs> hug and just greet you like, such warm warmth and love and i can say that's true because i never uh, uh, like really visit south africa but going to china for several times my connection was in south africa and i just oh, really? stay a few hours in the airport in the airport uh, and people were so nice they're so approachable they are so kind i was like i want to visit this country for sure oh, they yeah. look so nice Yes, I really want because I have friends there and they say it's just beautiful. It's a stunning country. So I want to visit your country one day and I hope I meet you there then. Yes. And let me take the opportunity to invite you to Brazil. I, my I'm dream coming. is make a carnival of queens where we can enjoy Imagine. together the carnival because it's unforgettable. It's just the hugest uh, open air parade in the world. It's, it's, it's a huge party. It's so beautiful. I think I you love that. it. Um, is it is it right if I say um, one of your most visited parts in Brazil is is it Rio? Yes, yes, Rio is the the place. Yeah, and the carnival is there. Like one of the places where we have the carnival is there. So when you come, you can visit Rio and enjoy the carnival. Let's organize it because I think it's. It's worth I it. I will love it. That's nice. <laughs> That's really nice. And I mean, I know, but if you can explain, because for Brazilians, like we have one competition, a uh, beauty competition, uh, okay. like Miss, Miss Universe Brazil, and the winner will go to Miss Universe. In South Africa, it's different. You have a pageant and different, like, no matter yes. who wins, they will choose for to which competition you go. How it works? Can you explain to people? Yes, of course. So we have Miss South Africa and we've got three licenses, which is Miss Universe, Miss World and Miss Supranational. Miss Supranational actually is one of our newest um, licenses of last year, yeah, 2020. And how it works is that they do the top three like they would usually do, but they would not on the night, on the coronation, they wouldn't say, for instance, this is Miss Universe South Africa. Only afterwards they evaluate and see what women will suit what competition best. And they obviously, um, they call us in and just ask us like, where would we like to go? But that's not necessarily how they choose. Um, the organization makes this choice. And Werner, he is our South African coach and creative director. He has a lot of expertise in this field. So he then just looks at every single woman and, and their character traits and say, for instance, this, this girl will do best at Miss World or this girl will, will do best at Miss Universe. Amazing. Eu perguntei para ela como é que funciona na África do Sul, porque é diferente do que no Brasil, que a gente tem um concurso do Miss Universo Brasil e a vencedora vai para o Miss Universo. Lá eles têm um concurso, o concurso detém a franquia do Miss Universo, do Miss Mundo e do Miss Supranational. Então, eles têm a vencedora, a segunda colocada e a terceira colocada. Só que nessa noite, eles não sabem quem vai para cada concurso. Eles vão avaliar essas candidatas depois e com a expertise deles, eles vão ver quem é perfil do quê. Então, no caso dela, ela foi em terceiro lugar e foi classificada para ir para o Miss Universo junto comigo agora. Então, lá é um pouquinho diferente essa seleção e eu acho muito legal, porque assim eles podem realmente olhar o perfil de cada concurso e dar a chance ideal para cada candidata. Eu achei muito lindo isso. Beautiful, Natasha. I'm so happy for having you here. You are sweet, you are kind. Oh, and so, 
inspiring, really. Thank you so much. Uh, well, actually, I, I had an interview this afternoon, and and this interview asked me um, if there's one girl at Miss Universe, so I'm a Universe delegate, that I would like to meet first. Who would it be? And I was like, listen, I've got my first interview with a Miss Universe delegate this evening, and it's Julia. So I'm gonna have to choose Julia. <laughs> first, so I'm gonna. Meet. And it's so actually so nice to speak with someone that's going to be there with me because everything is over social media. And obviously, we don't do so many events as we usually do or um, appearances. And this is actually just so nice to chat to you and just yeah, like you know exactly um, what it's like to prepare and you know going to something as big as Miss Universe. Yeah, that's a beautiful opportunity we are having, and I I feel very happy as well because we are sharing the same dream. So more yes. than being a competitors, like we, exactly. we will share this experience and this is the most beautiful part of Miss Universe, knowing strong and inspiring women around the whole world. So it's, this is the best part. So I, I feel so happy to know you more because then when we arrive at Miss Universe, <laughs> we already feel closer and I you believe the experience that. will be even better so i'm looking forward to give you a brazilian hug and Yay. meeting you in person in, in fact yeah it's amazing i must say i feel like everyone like every single country they are there for the same reason you know uh, you go there to represent something specific and stand for something specific and if you for instance don't directly relate with that you can learn from each other and that's so beautiful to me is going there and you're going to take away so much from every single woman uh, whether you stand for the same thing or not or went through the same experience and um, it's it, like you said it's a once in a lifetime um, opportunity that we get absolutely absolutely Natasha thank you so much I want thank to take you. the opportunity to thank all the South Africans that supported oh. me and send me so much love. Thank you so much. And please feel free to let some message to Brazilian fans because they really love you. Oh. I also just kept it here while you spoke to them. Guys, Julia, I love you, love you guys. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having me. I hope we'll chat soon, maybe have a FaceTime. Um, coffee sure. over Facebook. Like Please, that. let's keep and contact. Good luck with all your endeavors and, and prepping and training. And yeah, I hope it goes really, really well. Stay safe and to everyone else as well. Sure, you too. Enjoy your title and keep Thank safe. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy and do your best to enjoy this moment. Thank you so much. Bye, Julia. Thanks so much. Bye, Natasha. Gente, muito obrigada por vocês, por toda a interação que vocês tiveram aqui. Vocês foram lindos, vocês viram o quão maravilhosa ela é. Ela é uma doce. E a gente é muito parecida, eu fiquei bem impressionada. É muito bom ter esse contato com ela. Já estou louca para encontrar ela no Miss Universo. Eu fiquei muito feliz de que vocês conseguiram estar aqui com nós. Conosco. Um beijo, meus amores.